Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Welcome to today's webinar, Optimize and Validate Your Device Performance with NetProfiler. Presenting today is Ben Spiegel, our Global Services Innovation Manager at x -Rite. I'm Robert Grotans, the Global Digital Learning Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I just want to go over a couple of things today before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel, and we will have some time to answer a few of your questions at the very end. Finally, this webinar will be recorded, and we will follow up with an email after this webinar with a link to the recording so that you can watch it again. So with that, I will turn it over to Ben to get things started. Thank you, Robert. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us today to talk about ways to optimize and validate the performance of your spectrophotometers. I'm excited to get started and share some of this information with you all. So to start out, we want to look at the color tolerance food chain. So we're all, of course, working towards our customer requirements, that end tolerance that the end of the process needs to return for us. And of course, as you start to go deeper into the process, tolerances continue to get tighter and tighter due to stack up throughout the production process. At the very bottom of the food chain, though, is that instrument variation, which needs to be the tightest of all the other tolerances, since it's going to be the thing that could potentially introduce the most variation that's going to reduce that tolerance band that you have for the rest of production. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today, is what can we do to reduce that variation down at the base of the food chain? So what are the sources of instrument variation? Well, a lot of them are related to your environment and the conditions that the spectrophotometer is performing in. So whether that's humidity and temperature, dust and dirt, and general cleanliness, there's a number of different factors that are out there that are going to affect how that spectrophotometer is going to be able to perform. In addition to just the environment, there's also the device itself. Over time, even the best spectrophotometers can be prone to drifting or contamination. Things like the lamp, if it's using an incandescent bulb, can start to yellow over time, affecting how that device measures. That's why it's so important to make sure that the spectrophotometer is validated and verified regularly to try and avoid some of these issues. And what this leads to then is a scattering of measurements. So as contamination gets in, the calibration may become off with those instruments, leading to your measurements circling the mean or the true value of that. Um, color measurement. The first line of defense then is daily maintenance of that device. So these are things like operating in a clean environment, making sure that the laboratory equipment is, is kept in the best conditions possible, protecting it from those contaminants in the air, particularly with some of the calibration media, making sure that media remains clean and stable in order that the calibration that's done quite regularly on the instrument is working at its best. Some instruments also have check tiles that can be performed. And then in addition to these daily steps and just general best practices to make sure the device is performing well, annual certifications and preventative maintenance are an important tool to make sure that the device is clean and certified back to the factory settings. So with that, we have our first poll question we'd like to ask all of you. And, and that is, what do you find most important in terms of maintaining um, a device? Is it trying to maintain compliance with, say, an ISO standard or a third-party standard? Just making sure that the instrument is verified and reading as accurately as possible? Or is it reducing the difference across the supply chain, across multiple instruments, so that that instrument variation is small? And we'll pause for just a few seconds to give everyone some time. Thank you. So what this brings us to is a tool that X-Ray has called Net Profiler. In addition to all of those daily best practices and annual calibrations, Net Profiler is a software solution that has color standards 
that are able to actively improve how spectrophotometer is able to operate, really pushing it to maintain its highest level. There's two key ways that Net Profiler is gonna to work to help optimize that device. One, it's going to help improve the intra-instrument agreement. So that's improving essentially the size of these spheres. What is the tolerance that any individual device is gonna measure? This is shown on the, the right-hand chart with the spider graph. There's a device here with a number of different check tiles reading at about an average of 0.8 delta E. With Net Profiler, it's able to reduce that overall average to a smaller value of, say, around 0.3 average delta E. However, that's just one piece of the puzzle here. That's the improvement of one instrument. If we think across the supply chain, everyone from a supplier through a producer and an end customer may all be taking readings along the way. And if their devices are scattered all about their own centroids, it could lead to greater instrument tolerance, particularly across that chain. That's also where Net Profiler is able to improve the inter-instrument agreement, centering the centroids based on the X-ray master so that all of these devices measure as close to one another as possible, helping to overall reduce that instrument variation at the base of that food chain, allowing for higher um, yield of those customer requirements and also allowing for greater tolerance slips throughout the rest of the process as the instrument itself is not what's introducing that error into the process. So Net Profiler is a rather easy solution that's run at your facility. It encompasses a number of different types of standards depending on the instrument itself, but these standards are read through the spectrophotometer those readings are then compared to the standard, the master that was read of each of these tiles. These are um, sunk then back to the instrument after they're run through the net profiler algorithm, where they're then verified again by rereading these tiles on your spectrophotometer to verify that the profile that's being pushed back to the device is providing the correction that was expected. From there, you'll then receive a certification, which gives you um, ISO 9001 compliance if that's written into your standard. So then finally, what devices work with Net Profiler? Net Profiler is compatible with 045 and 450 spectrophotometers, as well as all the spherical spectrophotometers. So whether that is the benchtop spherical instruments, the handheld spheres, or some of the handheld and benchtop 045s, most or all are supported with this product line to help bring these back and improve how these devices measure over time. And this leads us to one more poll question that we have for all of you. And that is, uh, do any of you use Net Profiler? Is this something that uh, is already part of your workflow? All right, thank you everyone. And with that, we do have uh, an offer for all of you guys that are able to attend. Um, the best way to get Net Profiler if you're interested to learn more is to reach out to the x ray sales team. And Net Profiler is available in a few different ways, but the best is with the service care plans. And the service care plans offer complete end-to-end -end protection for the device. So it includes Net Profiler in addition to repairs, loaner instruments, and other entitlements. So if your device is always running at its, its best rate and uh, there are no surprise costs because everything is included to make sure that the device is operating. So with that, I would like to thank you all for uh, joining us today. And uh, we do have lots of time for questions if you are able to. Yeah, so we do want to use the remainder of this time to take some of your questions. So if you do have a question, please feel free to submit that now. While we wait for questions to come in, I will pop up one more poll question. If you are interested in talking to someone, feel free to answer this question and we will see if any questions come in. 
I do see one question here right now. Does not profiler replace annual device certification? So that profiler does not replace annual device certification. The two really work in sync. Um, annual device certification is a great way to make sure that the device is cleaned, preventative maintenance tasks are done, and certified back to the factory settings with the factory calibration media. However, that's just one data point throughout the string. So Net Profiler is able to work on a monthly basis so that you know consistently that the device is performing. It also is able to take into account things like those environmental conditions that may be specific to the location that device is operating in um, that would not be accounted for in that annual certification. Do I have to redo my standards after getting that profiler? So you shouldn't have to redo any of your standards after Net Profiler, um, but Net Profiler will help to center that device. So it is possible from before to after running Net Profiler that the values from those standards would be different um, because it is, it is like you are calibrating the device and, and recertifying it after running the software. Does each spectrophotometer need its own net profiler kit, or can one kit serve multiple spectros? So net profiler works with a shared set of media. So if you have, um, depending on the type, let's take a benchtop spectrophotometer, for example, those are all going to use the same tile set, and those can be shared across devices. Um, but each device would require a license um, that each of the serial numbers would have to have, but the tile set itself could be shared. How often does Net Profiler need to be run on a device? Our recommendation is that you run Net Profiler every 30 days to have that regular touch point to make sure that the device is optimized and running effectively. What do I need to net profile? So in order to net profile, you're going to need the tile set and a license for that instrument. Um, and, and both of those would be available with the service care plan. Both would be included. Um, and then in, in addition to that, there is software that comes with that that would be loaded onto a Windows PC. And then you would just simply need to connect that spectrophotometer to the PC in order to run through the workflow. Why is it not profiler used with non-contact devices? So that profiler is available with our VS3200 MetaView line of non-contact 045 devices. Um, where that profiler is not available is with the multi-angle devices at this time, but all other spherical and 045s are supported. Can that profiler help troubleshoot a color issue in my workflow? So it can aid in troubleshooting. One of the ways that Net Profiler can help is if you've identified a color issue, it's a very easy way to rule in or rule out the spectrophotometer as a potential source of that issue. Um, so say it was a handheld device, um, you could validate had it been dropped, is there something that's not operating correctly by running Net Profiler? seeing how that device is performing and if, if net profiler concludes that the device is operating within specification there's likely another cause um, whereas at the same time if something was wrong with the spectrophotometer it would be a good indicator to say that um, that might be the source of the color variation maybe um, this is a related question if none of my vendors have net profiler what do i gain from having it so what you'll gain if none of the vendors have Net Profiler is if you have one device, A, you'll know that that device is performing correctly um, kind of each and every month. So it gives those regular touch points. It also is going to help improve the size essentially of the color tolerance of that individual device. So it's going to narrow that to the best of its ability, um, helping to give you the confidence that what you measure is as tight as possible, keeping that lowest end of the color tolerance food chain small. Um, it also can help if you have multiple devices 
just at your facility to make sure that each of those stay aligned so that if one instrument is used one day on a job and then a different instrument is used um, on a similar job the next day, that those devices are all performing very in sync with one another. Does not profiler actually correct a device when it's off? So net profiler can be turned on and off through the settings of the instruments. Um, when net profiler is turned on, it is going to apply that latest profile that was run to actively improve how that device was measuring based on the verification process that you would walk through when you did the procedure. Um, however, if you were to turn net profiler off, the device would go back to its native state and, and read without that profile applied. So you do have the optionality there to choose if it is operating or not. How stable are the tiles used for that profiler? The tiles are quite stable. Um, we do recommend that they are maintained in um, stable temperature conditions. That's one of the things that could throw off the, the tile sets. If, if they were kept, say, in a, a temperature controlled environment, whereas the device is operating in a non-temperature control, um, the recommendation would be to keep those two things in a similar environment at the time of profile so that you're going to get accurate results between the two. Um, but the tile sets do have an expiration to try and address any drift that could occur. So for some of the devices, there's a two-year expiration on the media set and on the media used for the exact and the IntelliTrax family of devices, those expire after a year to ensure that they are stable and maintained over the course of their lifespan. We have a question on here. Are you going to go through the calibration steps? I don't know if this is a good segue. I, we have a video, a training video out there, Ben. I don't know if you wanna talk about that. Um, we certainly could go through that. Maybe if we, we hold that to the end, if there's some extra time, we can certainly pull up that training video. Um, I was not planning on going through the validation steps. The workflow changes slightly depending on the instrument, but generally it's, it's a measurement of the tile sets. Um, the software then runs comparing them to the reference before returning a profile. And then you would measure those tiles a second time to validate that that profile is working as expected before completing the workflow. So if we could return to that uh, one, that would be yep. great. Yep, sure. A few questions on Mac compatibility. Is that something we have or are planning on doing? Um, I guess I, I apologize, I'm not understanding with match compatibility. Is that, yeah, is not profile compatible with Mac? Um, I will have to get back to you on that one. I, I'm not sure. Okay. It looks like that is the majority of the questions. Um, thanks for doing rapid fire with me here, Ben. We got a lot of great, great questions. Um, if I skipped your question or we didn't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with your question. Um, but we'll go ahead and end here for today again thanks for all of your great questions um and thank you ben thanks again a recording to this webinar will be sent out for those of you that would like to watch it again um and have a great rest of your day